call a free range pastured farm in that the animals are free range outside on pasture as much as possible, which is obviously during the grass growing season and then during the non grass growing season, most of the animals will get additional feed or hay that we grow. Um, does your farm use any fertilizers or pesticides? We do not. Um, we use no fertilizers, no pesticides, no antibiotics, no, hom no hormones, no feed additives, no feed supplements. Um, anything that would not be natural, we, we don't use any of that on our farm. Anything you wouldn't find on a farm to begin with. Right, right. <laughs> um, what is the biggest problem with operating your business? The biggest problem would probably have to be predator control. Um, it, it's a labor intensive farm, which we understand and we and that's the way we want it to be. Um, but the issue with having all the animals free range and pastured is that we have a lot more <laughs> predators that like chicken, turkey, fortunately not a lot that like beef and pork that, mm -hmm. and lamb that could cause any issues. But we deal with things like fox, raccoon, possum, hawk, owl, and mink, which you wouldn't think would be indigenous to this area, but they are. And then there also have been coyote and mountain lion or cougar spotted in the area. We haven't seen them yet, which is fine with us. Uh, how many chickens would you say are on your farm? About 2,000 egg layers, and during the growing season, we have a staggered group of meat chickens. We do typically three to 4,000 meat chickens in a season. Um, what do you primarily feed the chickens? Primarily, we try to give them as much fresh grass and clover and bugs and worms, but they also get cracked corn and roasted soybeans and vitamins and minerals. And then the egg layers also get ground up oyster shell, which is a calcium supplement to help their shells stay, stay strong. And then the meat birds all get a little bit more of a protein, which could be either soy or fish meal to help keep up their growth rate. What do you do with uh, the waste? Waste, um, we have buildings that we actually clean out with um, the chickens and the turkeys, and it's a dry compost. Because the chickens aren't in there 24-7, they'll scratch through the droppings that they've left, and we add um, carbon or wood chips to help control manure issues. If, if we start to smell maybe a slight ammonia um, level, we'll put in more carbon to help offset it. And then we clean the buildings out, we put it in a manure spreader, and we sp and spread it around on our fields. It's a nice dry compost by the time we do that. So. We don't have any liquid manure traps. Um, we don't have to worry about any issues with runoff because the animals are so spread out, they're not concentrated in one area. So we feel that that's beneficial, not just for the animals, but also for the land, that the land is healthy. Factory farms. Um, personally, not a big fan of them. I also understand, though, that that is unfortunately the way that this country has gravitated towards feeding the masses, um, which is very unfortunate because it's not the healthiest product, I think, for anybody to eat, um, but it's become such a cheap item for people to consume that they feel that's the only way they can eat. Years ago, people were okay with spending a certain amount of, of money on food, and it seems like in the last 40 years, people feel like food needs to be very cheap and very fast. And I think that's why factory farming has become as big as it has. And it's it's not fair that everybody can't eat this kind of food and be healthy because the factory food, I think in the long run, even though you're not paying for a lot price-wise in the beginning, health-wise, I think you pay for it years later because it ends up doing things to your body that should never have been done. Mm -hmm. So yeah, not a big fan of factory <laughs> farming. Uh, and you, you explained a little bit earlier about uh, the differences between the chickens you raise and the ones that come out of a factory farm. Do you mind touching on that again? Sure. Um, and to give you uh, an example, for the egg-laying chickens, our eggs are actually tested and the cholesterol levels are about 50% lower than what you see commercially. And then vitamin E and other good benefits are higher level than what you see in the commercial eggs. And the meat chickens that we raise are actually the same type of bird that are raised commercially. They're called a Cornish cross. Um, we get them from the same hatchery that literally hatches millions of them for the eastern shore. And ours are generally eight to ten weeks old by the time they're four pounds, which is a slow growing process, which is what we feel is the best for them so that they're not having health issues while they're putting on weight. And 
commercially, they get them to four pounds in about four to five weeks. So it's literally half the time commercially because the, the birds have no outdoor experience. They're feeding um, constantly. They're sitting around, they're not exercising, so they literally gain weight very fast. Um, so we, we are very comfortable with the fact that it takes us twice as long to grow the same bird as it does commercially because we feel like that bird in the end is a lot healthier for, for the bird and for the consumer. Well, thank you so much for your time. You're Appreciate welcome. <laughs> Thanks for coming out.